Today we embark on a relaxing adventure in a CP intercity fast service. We'll be zipping through stunning landscapes at 200 km per hour from Lisbon Oriente to Casabranca and then at 120 km per hour in a diesel multiple unit to Bahia all in first class, exploring everything, from the trains to the seats, schedules and prices for this 186 km journey. Come along! Hi and welcome to Lisboa Oriente, where today's journey begins. Welcome to my first trip report as well. This architectural marvel was constructed in 1998 for the Expo 98 under a design by Santiago Calatrava, a famous Spanish architect who also designed the World Trade Center Transportation Hub in New York, the Ligi Railway Station in Belgium, among many other famous constructions in Europe and the United States. Just marvel at this imposing entrance in glass and steel. The station is accessible by train, bus, subway, car or on foot if you are in the nearby area. At its heart lies the ground level, featuring four entrances, several cafes, a pharmacy and a variety of kiosks. So many that one can be excused if mistakenly believes he arrived at the county fair rather than at a railway station. Those getting here by metro will first arrive at the basement from which escalators, elevators and regular stairs allow access between all levels. Let's move along and nearer to the train platforms. On the first floor we find this gigantic vending machine on the left, a cafe on the right and a compact waiting area. Let me show you a little of the station's first floor. Another gigantic vending machine. And another one. I'm walking a little just to give you an idea of the station's interior, all in raw cement. Do you enjoy this type of construction? Let me know in the comments below. These bridges with glass railings give the station a very contemporary look. I like them a lot and find them quite fitting in the overall ambience. There are multiple ticket offices in these rectangular prism structures rather than being centrally located. Also, there isn't any large departure board. Instead, there are these small screens at various locations showing arrivals and departures. Additionally, next to the stairs leading to each platform, there are displays like the one on the right showing the upcoming departures for that platform. I'm traveling in train 592, intercity service to Evora, departing from platform 6, as shown in the display. The top level features the striking canopy, which became Oriente's iconic trademark. There are eight platforms catering to a diverse range of rail services, from commuter to long distance. My train has just arrived from the depot at Santa Apollonia, seven kilometers down the line, and the locomotive is now shunting to its head. Intercity 592 is hauled by this class 5600, sort of the Portuguese version of Siemens Euro Sprinter. They entered service between 1993 and 1995, have a power output of 5600 kilowatt and a maximum speed of 220 kilometers per hour. The three Sorfame cars were built in the late 1960s and extensively modernized in the 1990s, thus becoming able to reach 200 kilometers per hour the maximum speed of our train. These cars were originally built under license from the Bud Company and feature Bud's trademarked stainless steel, rib design. For many it looks dated and even old, I find it classy and love the sun reflections. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. As the departure draws near, let's head inside and find my seat on this intercity service.
In a moment, we'll take a look at both first and second classes, but for now let's just appreciate the overall soothing design of the first class as the train is about to depart. I barely had time to walk the full length of the train to show you the departure from the rear on time at 9.02. It's a great opportunity to see Oriente's canopy as it gradually fades in the distance. The departure is shown at two times speed. At the start of this journey is the perfect time to review today's itinerary. It kicks off in Lisboa Oriente, winding through Lisbon with stops at Entracampos and Seat Rios. The train then traverses the majestic Tagus Bridge and heads out of Lisbon toward the east till Vendas Novas and southeast to Casa Branca, where I'll change to a diesel multiple unit for the final stretch to Beia. It's a quick four minutes connection. Will I make it? This is my comfortable, beautiful blue seat with no amount of recline that I could find but with generous leg room. There's a sturdy metallic folding table with a cup holder. An individual reading light above. A trash bin and in some seats, also a power socket but no USB ports, which would be a welcome addition. In less than 20 minutes after leaving Oriente, we arrive at the Tagus Bridge, a magnificent structure stretching 2,277 meters across the river. This engineering marvel was constructed by U.S. Steel and unveiled in 1966, offering these fascinating views. Though originally designed for both road and rail traffic, initially only the road was open. It wasn't until 1999 that the bridge was enhanced to accommodate trains, marking a groundbreaking improvement in connectivity between the two banks of the Tagus. Today, Fertigus commuter trains, Intercity, and Alpha long-distance trains all traverse this remarkable bridge, offering their passengers an opportunity to appreciate these breathtaking views over the city and the river. Pregel, the station immediately after the bridge is our next stop. It's mainly a commuter train station, but intercity services, like this one, call here as well. In a second, I'm going to show you the entire train. This is the first class cabin in a 2 plus 1 configuration, with nicely appointed curtains and a soothing ambience that is perfect for unwinding during a trip. Immediately after there's a bar which is unfortunately closed. I won't starve, but a coffee in these seats would be quite welcome. It's an inviting area which I'm sorry to see unused. In the wall, next to the counter, there's a menu for when the car is used in trains with bar service. I made sure to bring my own snack because I knew there wouldn't be a bar. This way, I can enjoy food and scenery together. Moving on, we're at the end of this car and pass to the second class cars. There are two, but I only filmed the one in the rear as the other had many passengers. The nice calm vibe continues in second class with the seats in dark green instead of blue. These cars, in all classes, are under consideration for a much needed update to bring them up to nowadays standards. I sincerely hope that they maintain the same inviting interior vibe. The seats in second class provide a good level of comfort perfectly adequate for this trip, with individual reading lights and nice folding tables as well. As for luggage, there are these racks at the end and in the middle of each car along with the racks above the windows. Each car also has space for two bicycles. While traveling at close to 160 kilometers per hour, we reach the end of the train where I take a moment to enjoy the rear views as we pass through Foguetero, not far from our next stop, Pinhol Novo. After Pinhol Novo, we enter the longest straight stretch on the Portuguese railway network, spanning almost 15 kilometers from Pinhol Novo to Poceirao. Here, our class 5600 can stretch its legs, or wheels, and we reach 200 kilometers per hour while enjoying some nice countryside views. Rolling quality is not perfect, but quite good nonetheless, especially considering that these cars were last modernized in the mid-1990s. 
Vendas Novas, a charming city of just over 10,000 residents, is the last stop before reaching Casabranca, where we will transfer to a diesel multiple unit to Bahia. Between the two, some nice speeds are attained, which I wanted to show you with some more rear views, now while passing toward Dagadanha. Enjoy! Before I know it, we reach Casabranca and catch my next train just in the nick of time. As I enter through the door furthest from my seat, I can show you the train interior at once. I'm now traveling in a class 450 diesel multiple unit, originally built by Sorfame in 1965. In 1999, these units underwent a large modernization, which included the replacement of the old Rolls-Royce engines with new Cummins, revamped interiors, and the much welcome addition of air conditioning. There are two cars on this DMU, one motorized, which we just left, and the trailer where we are now. In the trailer, which is quieter, we have the first-class cabin. The windows are predominantly covered in graffiti, which is quite a nuisance. At the rear of the cabin, there's the old luggage compartment at which I take a look. The cable hanging from the wall is the multiple unit connection. It's used to establish the electrical connections between two or three class 450 when coupled together. As the train leaves Casabranca, this is the scenery outside, seen from the top of a window. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Looking back inside, we have the seats in a 2 plus 2 configuration. These are just plain seats with no frills attached, the only difference between first and second class being the headrests. There are no tables except for the front facing seats which share one. Usually, I don't mind the lavatories much, but here I open an exception just to show you this very old-school toilet with direct connection to the track. Not all that common to find one of these nowadays. Although branded as an intercity service, between Casabranca and Bahia we make four brief stops to serve villages along the route. If taken all together, this being speed, service, and comfort, maybe these services shouldn't bear the intercity designation. They aren't bad, but nonetheless, they are quite inferior to the other intercity trains, so maybe branding them as such is a stretch and they should receive some other designation. The expansive views in this part of the country, though, never disappoint. The graffiti, however, forced me to film the scenery through one of the doors given that there wasn't a single window in the whole first class from which I could see outside while seated. We are now arriving to Bahia, but before we come to a full stop, I want to share some information about schedules and prices. On weekdays, there are five daily options for traveling from Lisbon to Bahia, and on the weekends, there are three. There's a link in the description below for the full schedule at CP's website. As for prices, I paid 33 euros for a round-trip ticket purchased three days before departure through CP's website. I know that back at Casabranca I promised to show you the class 450 DMU in which I traveled, and I will. However, it is now shunting to pass from line 1 to line 2, so while waiting, I'll show you the station. It's a simple and elegant design, in white and with tiles representing various agricultural activities, inaugurated in 1940. Note also, the charming lamps hanging from the ceiling. Inside, there's this charming, old-style waiting room which still keeps an old clock. I think I hear the class 450 coming back to the station, so let's go and take a look.
While heading outside, I want to thank you for coming along on this journey. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. Your support is very helpful and means a lot. Bye for now and see you in my next video.